Hey guys, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary and I've just recorded a video on exam subject CS2. Now I thought, let me just make a introduction to the video just to explain that these are the exam syllabus for the IFOA. So this is the UK um, or the English actuarial exams. And the reason why I'm doing it on this subject is because I saw on LinkedIn that this subject CS2 has been oversubscribed in India, and that means there must be a lot of demand for people wanting to write this exam. Note that in South Africa, we write a very, very similar exam known as A212. So A212 and CS2 are basically the same thing. In fact, the actuarial exams in South Africa are almost identical to the English ones. The big change is that we still have CT1 and CT5 as separate exams, where in the new syllabus in the UK, they've been combined as something called CM1. And then finally, before we head to the video, just for the American viewers, you're gonna be looking at the syllabus and you're gonna be like, wow, this is, this is very different to what we do, because I've just been on the Society of Actuaries website, and I see you guys have it in a very different order to us. So CS2, I guess, is most closely related to something that you got called STEM, short-term actuarial mathematics, but it also has a little bit of statistics for risk modeling as well as mathematical statistics. So I'll maybe do a, a video later on where we compare the actuarial exams in America versus the ones in the UK. But for now, let's go back to the video on CS2 and see how the curriculum has changed and if it is a combination of just the subjects CT4 and CT6. Everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, I want to talk about the changes to the actuarial exams. And mainly, I want to see if this new subject, CS2, is simply the addition of CT4 and CT6. So for those of you who don't know, the actuarial exams have changed quite considerably in 2019 and they've tried to restructure the actuarial exams so that they kind of fall into some sort of topics. Whereas before, I mean, yeah, you can see before we just had subject CT1 to CT9 um, and it was I thought it was quite a nice uh, layout because you would do CT1, then you would do CT2, CT3 and each subject kind of helped you move on to the next one. But now they've changed it to kind of create these three categories, actuarial statistics, actuarial mathematics, and business. And I must say, the problem, the problem with this is that not only can you see everything has kind of moved around, but what order do you actually do these exams in? Because in order to do subject CT5, you needed to have done subject CT1, CT3, and CT4. But now with it being CM1, you need to what, do CS2 before you do CM1? I don't really know what, what the best order is. Uh, so let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are. But what I wanna talk about in this video is CS2, this risk modeling and survival analysis. Because if we look at the old syllabus for subject CT4, we had the principles of modeling, and this made sense because the subject was called models. That, however, has been kicked to CM1, which is the weird combination of CT1 and CT5. We've got stochastic processes, which has been moved to CS2, and we also see them popping up in CM2. We then have mark of chains, which have moved to CS2, mark of processes, which have also moved to CS2, as well as survival models, lifetime distributions, transitional intensities, and graduation. So we are seeing the bulk of CT4 move to CS2, except for very much the first chapter. So the first chapter just, shame, that, that died. Um, with subject CT6, we see that there were a lot more casualties. For instance, one of my favorite topics, which is decision slash game theory, that's just been removed from the actuarial syllabus. I mean, I couldn't find it in any of the other exams. If you guys have located it in another subject, please let me know in the comment section. But game theory, which I thought was brilliant, I mean, the whole thing is to help actuaries make better financial decisions, and we've just thrown that away. Um, we then have risk models, which have now been moved to the risk models. I mean, you're gonna see, yeah, CS2 is literally called risk models. So it makes sense for that to move there. 
But then ruin theory, which builds very much on risk models, it's kind of the capital modeling approach when taking in risks, and it, it very much is a natural extension of risk models that's been moved to CM2, which I really don't understand. I mean, CM2, which we saw in the, the earlier pages, is basically the new CT8. That was very much a financial exam, and now it's like, oh, we need to sprinkle some insurance in it to make it actuarial. So I really don't understand why that was done. I mean, that should have maybe been moved to CS2. Bayesian statistics, shame, people are doing CS1, which is, yeah, they have to deal with uh, Bayesian statistics. And I think it's unfortunate because this was a lovely topic, and in CT6 we went into a lot of depth with credibility theory and all of that, and I don't know, I think they're going to probably have to water it down to fit it in with all the, the CT3 syllabus that got moved into CS1. Runoff triangles, I don't know why, again, they moved it to CM2. This is a very much an insurance reserving um, topic that they've tried to put with the financial subject, I guess, to try and make CM2 actuarial. I really, really didn't understand that move. Um, as well and they, they've rebranded it as liability modeling in CM2 which I thought was quite interesting because you know they want to try to go with this whole actuarial approach that our way to finance is to matching assets and liabilities so I think that's the thinking is that you can't teach the pricing of assets without the pricing of liabilities as well but still I mean runoff triangles that is very much um, something that I would have kept or put with CS2 rather than CM2. Then generalized linear models also got relegated to CS1. So CS1, I mean, it already had so much uh, content and they're just loading it up with a whole bunch of things. So I actually need to go and check what, what has CS1 lost that was in CT3 that didn't get passed on. Then time series has been moved to CS2 and that's that's like a whole topic on its own i mean i would have actually moved that to cm1 because i mean cm2 because this is something that you can use to price assets is using time series but for some reason that's in cs2 then monte carlo simulations yeah cheers that's that's gone um and we're going to see that in cs2 they're going to introduce new topics so <laughs> this is this is what i don't get is I mean, risk modeling is a huge section, okay? And they're like, no, that's not enough. What we're going to do is we're going to add in copulas from the specialist subject on enterprise risk management. That's also coming into the theory, into the yeah, into the syllabus, as well as extreme value theory. I mean, it took me quite a while to get my head around extreme value theory, and they're bringing it in here. Um, for those of you who are doing extreme value theory it's worth looking at the central limit theory and how that focuses on the average of a data set. Extreme value theory uses a similar approach, but it focuses on the maximum of a, a data series. So little tip if you want to try and go through that, I might make a video on that later as well. Um, yeah, so we're seeing time series is coming in, stochastic processes, mark of change, survival models, lifetime distributions, transitional intensities, graduation, and then if that wasn't bad enough, let's throw in mortality projection as well, which I didn't do the specialist subjects in life insurance, but I'm thinking that somehow found its way in here. And then they're like, that's not enough. Let's also add in machine learning, uh, supervised and unsupervised. And I'm like, okay. So I'm going to be going through this the subject because I'm going to be presenting some workshops on it. So I need to go through it and learn all these things and I might possibly be releasing a few videos. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting going through and seeing what is the difficulty compared to CT4 and CT6 because it is so much more content. I'm expecting them to dumb it down a bit. I mean, if they don't dumb it down a bit, the, these exams are getting incredibly difficult. But yeah, this is something that, I mean, we've taken six subjects, CT1, CT3, CT4, CT5, CT6, CT8, and we've tried to fit them into four subjects as well as adding on a bunch of other stuff. So it's crazy, um, but I mean, this is actuarial science. We're, we're not known for having easy exams. 
So best of luck uh, for everyone who is writing. Like I say, I will be giving workshops on subject CS2, which is this random variables, time series, stochastic process, survival models, machine learning. I like how they try to condense the five topics to make it look as if it's not that bad. When if you read through the actual syllabus and you see all the subtopics, you see that it is, it is quite intense. And also I'm gonna be doing this one over here, uh, CM2, which is theories of financial market behavior, measures of investment risk, stochastic investment return models, asset valuations, liability valuations, which is ruin theory and runoff triangles and all that lovely stuff from CT6, as well as option theory. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna say subscribe and hit the bell notification because the next few videos that I'm gonna be releasing are going to be very much exam focused. So if you want to get notified when I do release a new video on that, hit that uh, bell button. I'm also going to be creating a bunch of R videos to help you guys get started with R and we're going to be exploring that you know computer package together. But as always, thanks so much for watching and study hard. Cheers.